Hey, Callie, how are you? I'm good. Hey, thank you for working through the technology with me. Uh, I was uh, confused as you were. <laughs> yeah, I think um, you know we're always we're always learning something new. So I'm glad you joined. And today we're going to talk about energy. Energy is such a key part of high performance because how we feel is how we show up. And when we feel great, we do great. Um, but if we don't, um, you know, it can hold us back a little bit. So we're going to talk about um, how you have more energy each day and how we can amplify your energy so that you can have higher levels. You really want the vibrancy and stamina you need to achieve your goals and live a fully charged life. So what we found is that the world's highest performers um, achieve their goals um, through tons of energy, vibrancy, um, but they also have endurance in chasing those dreams. And you know, when you go after longer term goals, sometimes it's hard because we get excited in the beginning and then there's that dip. And uh, so that's, that's what we'll be talking about today. You know, energy was super personal to me because when I started doing high performance work, uh, I, I didn't realize that I wasn't eating well to support my energy. I wasn't moving the way I needed to, but I also just wasn't thinking about health and wellness in the way that I needed to. And since I did my high performance coaching as a client, um, I've lost tons of weight. And, but it's not about how I, how I look as much as it is how I feel. Um, and when I bring that enthusiasm to my time with my clients, um, that's where the magic starts to happen. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. All right, well, I'd love to hear how you feel about the topic and how it's affecting your performance. Let's start with a few questions. Okay. Okay, so in the last, you know, 90 days, how have you felt energetically in terms of your mental and physical vibrancy? I would say I'm definitely kind of in a, a lull right now just because everything I'm doing is from home. You know, I'm working from home. I'm, you know, entertaining myself from home, whether that's, you know, watching movies or cooking dinner versus going out. Yeah. I'm out at home now so it's like I'm doing everything at home so more often than not I find myself waking up and just feeling like well I guess I don't even have to get dressed or like oh yeah. and then I'll make breakfast or like you know I've kind of lost my routine of you know getting up and going to the gym super early or or the things that give me energy you know before yeah, yeah. I've in like a, a rut energetically right now just because everything is just the same <laughs> well and movement is where we get energy you know and um, I like to think about energy it's not just something we have or we don't have we can actually create energy we are the power plant um, but if we're not moving and we're living in these zoom boxes and we're kind of restricting ourselves and we're living in our house boxes and we're eating lunches out of boxes that get delivered and all the kind of joy in our lives comes from boxes on the front step. We kind of box ourselves in energetically. So that makes a lot of sense. Tell me about a time that you felt just alive and sparking and vibrant and when you really were at your physical best and your mental best. Hmm. Well, physical best is an interesting one because, as you know, I played college soccer. So that's a whole different time in my life years and years ago. I don't even know that person anymore, but <laughs> um, I would definitely say summer. So now that I'm, that you asked that question, I'm kind of realizing that maybe so, sort of my lack of energy is coming from the weather also. Could be. Yeah. Uh, summers just in general, I feel so great. I'm outside all the time. I'm hiking. I'm, you know, even when we first moved here, I would just sit outside and work with my laptop or sit outside and read. Yeah. I'm, all the time so i think when i have access to the outdoors when it's not freezing yeah. that's the difference for me yeah yeah that's huge and i would say you know moving is one part of that but just being outside is a huge part of that you know there's something to be said for that vitamin d but also there's something to be said for just hearing the wind through the leaves once in a while so i hear you on that uh in the areas of nutrition exercise wellness and sleep what habits do you have that you feel are really supporting your energy and your health? Mm -hmm. um, so I do still play soccer um, in an uh, indoor league. I play on a co-ed team and a, a women's team, and that's Tuesdays and Sundays, which I love. It's not only 
good physically, but I get my uh, my aggression out there. So that's yeah. Good. And um, I have a Peloton now, so I'm getting into that. Um, cool. Who's your favorite instructor? Oh, it's hard. I always PR with um, Olivia. Okay. But I love Cody when I just want to like jump on and have a fun ride, you know? Yeah, Cody's more about the fun. I like Robin too. She has some like some personal development nuggets that come out and you're like, oh my gosh, I can accomplish anything. And you get off the bike and you're just drenched in sweat. Yeah. I, I need to take a class with her. I haven't tried one yet. She's awesome. Yeah. And then, I mean, nutrition wise, I think I eat like pretty healthy. Um, I would say the, the area where I'm definitely lagging is sleep for some reason, even, even with you know, I try like habits of like drinking sleepy time tea before bed, not watching TV in the bed and reading instead. And I do all these things that I think are going to help. And I just can't shut my mind off and lay there. Yeah. for, Yeah. And just don't get to sleep. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's absolutely true. Uh, that sometimes it, it's our mind that gets in the way of our sleep the most. Uh, sleep hygiene is, uh, a fascinating topic that I started to dive into when I went through this energy session the first time. And uh, sleep hygiene has a lot to do with light. You mentioned that a little bit. When you read in bed, um, do you read on a physical book or do you read off an iPad or something? Yeah, physical book. Okay, so that's good. And, um, you know, light can be a big thing. Uh, are you tracking your sleep in any way? Like, have you heard of an aura ring? Um, no, I haven't. So there's an aura ring that's about this size, and um, it tracks it tracks your movement, and tracks your sleep, your deep sleep, your REM sleep, um, how often you wake up in the night. Um, also, a, a Fitbit is another thing. Um, the Fitbit will do it as well, but not as accurately as the aura ring. But just starting to track what's happening in your sleep and then fine-tuning it with what happens before you go to sleep can be a big difference maker because I do think you have to experiment uh, it sounds like you're doing a lot right, but sleep hygiene is a super important um, piece. What do you think um, are your best routines for recharging? Sorry, I lost you there for a second. Repeat that. Sorry. What, what are your best What are your best routines um, for recharging on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis? Mm. Daily, Even yearly. Yeah. yeah. Daily, I would say it, it's trying to do the physical activity, which doesn't always happen, but I definitely notice a difference when I do something physical versus when I don't. Um, my body, like my, my mind too. Um, monthly, I just keep going back to like the being outdoors thing. And I've been talking to my husband so much recently about like, we need to go on a trip. Like it yeah. doesn't, like anything crazy, but like we just need to like get out, get yeah. some, get like some time away. Cause normally we travel, I wouldn't say a lot, but we travel a good amount, you know, yeah. normal times. And I feel like that always resets you. And, you know, there's something to be said by, you know, laying by a pool, you know, getting a little sunburnt that can really reset you. So that's in our, in our plans. And I need that. <laughs> what do you think on a, um, and is that, uh, you know, on a, and that's um, on a trip, on a daily basis, on a trip would be great, but on a daily basis, what do you think are some things that would make you feel more vibrant? Hmm. Probably committing to getting outside or being physical. I mean, I'm definitely a baby when it comes to cold weather and the snow, and I need to be a little bit more brave. And where I live, we have a bunch of trails right outside the house. Yeah. Um, and that's, just we're so lucky to have that and I need to kind of commit to you know taking my dog for a walk on those trails every day because I do feel a difference when I do that but I get stuck in this thing of you know oh my gosh it's 25 degrees I'm not going outside today yeah I'm cold you know yeah well one thing I want to point out is that you know you came to me today we wanted to chat about what ideas I have to help you with your energy but I just want to point out real quick that through asking you a few questions, you've actually come up with some great answers, right? Um, and I think this is so much, so often the case when we have our own answers, we have our information already. Uh, you know, as, as a high performance coach, I just wanna help you discover those things. Um, I'd suggest, you know, writing that down if you have a pen and paper handy, um, but that's a great key is, is just making a commitment to get out every day. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I definitely think that's one thing that would be really important. Are there any areas of your life that are draining you, you know, st adding stress or draining you energetically? Mm. It, uh, well, maybe just honestly right now, just like COVID, like just the limitations with it and everyone talking about it and everyone having these sort of irrational fears or irrational ideas where, you know, it's okay if they go and do one thing, but it's not okay if they do another. And it's, man, it is exhausting, you know, like yeah. my best friend has a kid and I, that's her number one priority is her kids, uh, like health and safety. So she's doing a lot of things that are enhancing her kid's life, like socially, but so then I'm not getting to see them as much because she's making that choice which like, I totally understand, but I'm like, man, this is exhausting. Like having to kind of track what I've been doing and letting other people know. And the whole thing is just totally draining. Yeah. I, I hear you there. Uh, what are you, what are you doing for stress management? Would you say? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I appreciate your honesty. Um, I'll give you some ideas here. I do think that, um, that stress piece is a huge part of, you know, that interacts with your sleep. And so when you start to see the circle that happens with your sleep, your low energy, stress, and then less sleep, and it starts to be a bit of, bit of a vicious cycle. So for energy, uh, the big aha I had was it's not sleep, it's not movement, it's not what you eat, it's not stress management. It's got to be a little bit improvement in each of those things mm -hmm. because they all work together. Um, and they all improve each other over time. What do you think you could take on to try to achieve three times more energy, like massive changes? Probably my nutrition would be a good one. Um, like I said, I'm pretty good normally, but you know, one or two days a week, it's like, oh, I want a burger or I want some wings or whatever. And then once you start eating like that, it's easy to like keep on that track because it's so yeah. good. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably a, one of the major areas of, of improvement that I could um, do. And even just talking to you right now, I was thinking I used to like journal all the time. I should maybe try to like journal and that would be a good way to dress release, but also kind of set my like daily intentions of yeah. and exercise, get outside, you know, yeah. get dressed actually, like just remind myself like, Hey, you know, you're still working. So you can't wear your pajamas all day type thing to just like little reminders. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And um, setting an intention at the beginning of the day is so important. You know, I usually just have three things that I have to get done um, by the end of the day. This is one of them today. Um, and then I always ask myself in the morning, who do I need, who needs me to show up on my A game today? So this morning when I was getting ready and I thought, who needs me to show up on my A game today? I thought of you, of course, because I knew we were going to be talking. And so that put me in a different mindset. Instead of being nervous about being on IG Live, I'm excited about how do I show up for you um, at the best level possible? So one of my favorite questions, and this is a big one, and um, I, these questions, I, I'll send them to you afterwards because it's the, really the work in high performance is also between the sessions. It's all around really asking yourself these questions continuously. Um, but if you were really to focus on your optimal health, your optimal well-being, what are some things you'd have to stop doing? And what are some things you'd need to start doing? Mm. I would really have to think about that and like self-reflect maybe a little bit. Um, well, I think that that's good. And I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do to help you with that reflection is, I'm going to send you the energy checklist, and there are some things that you could consider doing under rest and exercise, mm -hmm. diet and nutrition, and daily energizing. You know, for instance, get, making sure you're getting eight to nine hours of sleep a night. Um, study after study after study has shown that we all need eight to nine hours of sleep a night except maybe a tiny, tiny percentage of population. But there are a lot of us, including me, that say, oh, I need six or seven hours. And we get by on less, but it has really proven, sleep has proven to be a really big deal in, um, as part of your exercise routine. Um, diet and nutrition, you know, making sure you're getting tested for food allergies, making sure that you're taking a food-based multivitamin, um, drinking health shakes, you know, for breakfast or snacks. You know, they're all little things that you can do there. So I'll, I'll share that with you. 
And then on the energizing section, um, you know, staying standing more often. I'm standing at a standing desk right now, just making sure we move. Um, one of my favorite ways for daily energizing is hugging and engaging others. Well, guess what? You know, we can't do that right now. So we have to get smart and find other ways. But finding a way to make people smile, you know, laughing a little more often, um, just bringing a little bit more joy into everything we do. Uh, that's just another way to have a really good time. So I'm going to send this to you. Um, go ahead and look at the energy checklist. Just commit to doing one of these things uh, on a regular basis. Don't try to bite off, you know, a whole new routine and maybe pick one food you're going to limit or one food you're going to add in. For me, I don't like to limit. If you tell me I can't have something, it's all I think about. Yeah. So what I suggest you do is just say, I, I get to have whatever I want, but I've committed to a certain level of servings of broccoli. For me, broccoli, sesame seeds, which help my hormones, um, and a couple of other key foods. So just find a way to make it fun for yourself. Uh, this doesn't have to be uh, tough, but when you start to when you start to see your energy increase, it builds on itself because now you feel like going for a walk. And when you're back from the walk, you know, maybe now you feel like you're in the, in the place where you could meditate and don't meditate for, if, if you meditate, if you don't meditate, don't meditate for 30 minutes. Don't sit and try to be quiet for five minutes, try two minutes, try a minute at a time, you know, get the headspace app or something similar and just do a little bit at a time. For me, um, I love transcendental meditation and it's 20 minutes twice a day. Well, I fell out of the habit and just got back into the habit by doing a couple minutes every day, just getting back into the daily routine, right? Yeah, I was trying um, on the Peloton apps, the like the, the nightly meditations, like yeah. the meditations. Yeah. And it's so, I, I guess I just uh, am bad at forming the habits where I only yes. do a few times and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if that made a difference rather than yeah out for what 14 days or whatever to actually create a habit to, to yeah. really make a difference so that might be an area of improvement that i need to work on too all right so write that down make sure you've got that it sounds like you've got some good action steps mm -hmm. um let's talk again soon and see where you're at okay any other questions before we close up i don't think so you've given me some really good ideas thank you no uh, oh, that's fine and i appreciate that but actually you gave yourself a ton of great ideas i just asked the questions that's true. Well, thanks for joining me today. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. All right, bye-bye.